Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive peer exchange titled Viewpoints on Pancreatic Ductal Adenocarcinoma. Outcomes for patients with advanced pancreatic adenocarcinoma have recently begun to improve owing to refinement in the use of combination chemotherapy and new sequencing strategies for therapies. We are now entering an era where we are learning more about molecular differences and driving mechanisms among pancreatic cancers with the hope of identifying personalized therapies for patient subsets. In this peer exchange discussion, I am joined by a panel of international experts in the field of gastrointestinal oncology. Together, we will provide you with our perspective on recent advances and what they mean to the future of patient care. I am Dr. Johanna Bendel, Director of the GI Cancer Research Program and Associate Director of the Drug Development Program at the Sarah Cannon Research Institute in Nashville, Tennessee. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Winston Chung, Medical Oncologist, University of Calgary, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Department of Oncology, and Chair and Provincial Director of Health Services Research for Cancer Control Alberta. Dr. Manuel Hidalgo, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, Chief of Hematology Oncology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Ramesh Ramanathan, Professor of Medicine and Director of the GI Medical Oncology Program, Division of Hematology Oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona. Dr. Tanyos Bakaisab, Professor of Medicine and Science, Program Leader, GI Oncology Cancer Program, Senior Associate Consultant, Mayo Clinic, Arizona and Dr. Thomas Seuferlein, MD, PhD, Professor of Medicine, Chair, Department of Internal Medicine, and member of the AIO Executive Board, as well as the AIO Steering Committee for Pancreatic Cancer. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, and let's begin. So we're here at beautiful Madrid at ESMO. Lots of new data coming up, lots of promising th things to come for patients with pancreas cancer. We're looking so much now across cancers at the biology of disease and what drives these cancers to not only grow, but sometimes be resistant to the therapies that we're giving them. Dr. Hidalgo Manuel, you have done extensive research into the biology of pancreas cancer. Can you tell us a little bit more about the pancreas cancer and this theory of the microenvironment being so important in the treatment of this disease? Thank you and uh, good morning. It's really a pleasure to be here uh, uh, this morning. Um, the, the microenvironment has been noted for many years to be an important component in pancreas cancer. When you look at these tumors under the microscope, actually, you see more stroma than a transformed epithelial component. The role of, of the stroma uh, has been and continues to be elucidated over the last few years. And I think we have transitioned through different phases, from a phase in which we thought that the stroma was just bad and restraining the diffusion of chemotherapy to the tumor, and there, there are strategies that probably we'll discuss later on to eliminate the stroma to facilitate diffusion of chemotherapy. Some other papers later on showed that uh, the stroma may also have a protective, protective effect in the sense that it's to some extent restraining uh, or compromising the ability of the cancer to metastasize. So if you eliminate it completely or too rapidly, those tumors at the end become even more aggressive. And that may be the reason some of the drugs that have been tested in that environment have, have failed. What I think is new and very interesting is really the interaction between the stroma and the epithelial component, both at the oncogene signaling level and how they cross talk, and uh, perhaps more recently at the metabolic and, and, uh, and feeding uh, effort in the sense that the cancer is taking advantage of the stroma to, to secure uh, uh, nutrition and and mainly proteins and, and other nutrients to be, to be able to, uh, to grow. So it's really a fascinating uh, biological uh, um, aspect of the disease uh, and that I think will provide uh, therapeutic, therapeutic targets for, for intervention. 
So it's so interesting because when we are taught in medical school about treating cancers, you're thinking about attacking the cancer cell, but we really have to realize that we're not only treating and attacking the cancer cell, but the surrounding stroma, the microenvironment as well. You know, Ramesh, there's been mm -hmm. some very interesting mm -hmm. data that's starting to come out looking at KRAS mutations and, and how that might even affect signaling and, and stromal interaction. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, that's correct. Um, we know that pancreatic cancer depends on KRAS signaling. Uh, 95 to 98 percent of pancreatic cancers have a KRAS mutation. And a recent paper published in 2016 showed that pancreatic cancer cells um, can also interact with the stroma. Uh, these cells recruit fibroblasts in the stroma, uh, which is activated and which in turn can regulate the pancreatic cancer uh, cell growth and apoptosis. So it's just not the tumor cell, but uh, importantly, the stroma is dynamic and plays an active part in cancer cell growth. So, so it's just more evidence to us that that interaction and in, in the crosstalk is, is helping the cancer and, and prote protecting the cancer and, and letting it continue to be bad. You know, more crosstalk, not only with the, the RAS mutation, but looking at um, other crosstalk that we're seeing. Thomas, we've also seen some recent data looking at alanine. Yeah, this is actually fascinating. And this is work dating back to the early 19s where Mina Apte and the late Max Bachem from Ulm were actually coming from discovered pancreatic stellate cells as a specialized form of myofibroblast in the pancreas. And there was a, a early on a very interesting interaction between these stellate cells and the tumor and there was a lot of work done and they, they stimulate the growth of each other, they secrete factors that actually produce stroma. But now this is very interesting there is a notion that actually stellate cells feed the tumor cells yeah. and provide by secreting, actively secreting alanine to the tumor cells a source of uh, carbon, which otherwise may be not available due to tumor hypoxia. So they take really care. It's a, symbiot a symbiosis between the tumor cells and the stellate cells and alanine seems to be a critical amino acid provided from one cell to the other to really support tumor growth.